Learn English through stories. Letters from a Cat by Helen Hunt Jackson. 3. My dear Helen, I am too stiff and sore from a terrible fall I have had to write more than one line, but I must let you know that my fright was very silly, and I am very much mortified about it. The house and the things are all safe. Your mother has come home and I will write, and tell you all, just as soon as I can use my pen without great pain. Some new people have come to live in the Nelson house, very nice people, I think, for they keep their milk in yellow crockery pans. They have brought with them a splendid black cat whose name is Caesar, and everybody is talking about him. He has the handsomest whiskers I ever saw. I do hope I shall be well enough to see him before long, but I wouldn't have him see me now for anything. Your Affectionate Pussy 4. My Dear Helen There is one thing that cats don't like any better than men and women do, and that is to make fools of themselves. But a precious fool I made of myself when I wrote you that long letter about Mary's moving out all the furniture, and taking the house down. It is very mortifying to have to tell you how it all turned out, but I know you love me enough to be sorry that I should have had such a terrible fright for nothing. It went on from bad to worse for three more days after I wrote you. Your mother did not come home, and the awful Irish woman was here all the time. I did not dare to go near the house, and I do assure you I nearly starved. I used to lie under the rose bushes and watch as well as I could what was going on, now and then I caught a rat in the barn, but that sort of hearty food never has agreed with me since I came to live with you, and became accustomed to a lighter diet. By the third day I felt too weak and sick to stir, so I lay still all day on the straw in Charlie's stall, and I really thought, between the hunger and the anxiety, that I should die. About noon I heard Mary say in the shed, I do believe that everlasting cat has taken herself off, it's a good riddance anyhow, but I should like to know what has become of the plaguey thing. I trembled all over, for if she had come into the barn I know one kick from her heavy foot would have killed me, and I was quite too weak to run away. Towards night I heard your dear mother's voice calling, poor pussy, why? poor pussy, where are you? I assure you, my dear Helen, people are very much mistaken who say, as I have often overheard them, that cats have no feeling. If they could only know how I felt at that moment, they would change their minds. I was almost too glad to make a sound. It seemed to me that my feet were fastened to the floor, and that I never could get to her. She took me up in her arms, and carried me through the kitchen into the sitting room. Mary was frying cakes in the kitchen, and as your mother passed by the stove she said in her sweet voice, You see I found poor pussy, Mary. Humph, said Mary, I never thought but that she'd be found fast enough when she wanted to be. I knew that this was a lie, because I had heard what she said in the shed. I do wish I knew what makes her hate me so. I only wish she knew how I hate her. I really think I shall gnaw her stockings and shoes some night. It would not be any more than fair, and she would never suspect me, there are so many mice in her room, for I never touch one that I think belongs in her closet. The sitting room was all in most beautiful order, a smooth white something, like the side of a basket, over the whole floor, a beautiful paper curtain pink and white, over the fireplace, and white muslin curtains at the windows. I stood perfectly still in the middle of the room for some time. I was too surprised to stir. Oh, how I wished that I could speak, and tell your dear mother all that had happened, and how the room had looked three days before. Presently she said, Poor pussy, I know you are almost starved, aren't you? And I said yes, as plainly as I could mew it. 
Then she brought me a big soup plate full of thick cream, and some of the most delicious cold hash I ever tasted, and after I had eaten it all, she took me in her lap, and said, Poor pussy, we miss little Helen, don't we? And she held me in her lap till bedtime. Then she let me sleep on the foot of her bed, it was one of the happiest nights of my life. In the middle of the night I was up for a while, and caught the smallest mouse I ever saw out of the nest. Such little ones are very tender. In the morning I had my breakfast with her in the dining room, which looks just as nice as the sitting room. After breakfast Mrs. Hitchcock came in, and your mother said, Only think, how fortunate I am. Mary did all the house cleaning while I was away. Every room is in perfect order, all the woolen clothes are put away for the summer. Poor pussy, here, was frightened out of the house, and I suppose we should all have been if we had been at home. Can you imagine how ashamed I felt? I ran under the table and did not come out again until after Mrs. Hitchcock had gone. But now comes the saddest part of my story. Soon after this, as I was looking out of the window, I saw the fattest, most tempting robin on the ground under the cherry tree. The windows did not look as if they had any glass in them, and I took it for granted that it had all been taken out and put away upstairs, with the andirons and the carpets, for next winter. I knew that there was no time to be lost if I meant to catch that robin, so I ran with all my might and tried to jump through. Oh, my dear Helen, I do not believe you ever had such a bump. I fell back nearly into the middle of the room, and it seemed to me that I turned completely over at least six times. The blood streamed out of my nose and I cut my right ear very badly against one of the casters of the table. I could not see nor hear anything for some minutes. When I came to myself, I found your dear mother holding me, and wiping my face with her own nice handkerchief wet in cold water. My right forepaw was badly bruised, and that troubles me very much about washing my face, and about writing. But the worst of all is the condition of my nose. Everybody laughs who sees me, and I do not blame them. It is twice as large as it used to be, and I begin to be seriously afraid it will never return to its old shape. This will be a dreadful affliction, for who does not know that the nose is the chief beauty of a cat's face? I have got very tired of hearing the story of my fall told to all the people who come in. They laugh as if they would kill themselves at it, especially when I do not manage to get under the table before they look to see how my nose is. Except for this I should have written to you before, and would write more now, but my paw aches badly, and one of my eyes is nearly closed from the swelling of my nose, so I must say goodbye. Your affectionate pussy, P.S. I told you about Caesar did I not, in my last letter. Of course I do not venture out of the house in my present plight, so I have not seen him except from the window. Vocabulary words, stiff, in this context, it means rigid or inflexible, often used to describe physical discomfort. Sore, painful or tender, usually in relation to muscles or body parts. Mortified, deeply embarrassed or humiliated. Crockery, earthenware or pottery dishes, often used for cooking or serving food. Splendid, impressive, excellent, or magnificent. Whiskers, the long, projecting hairs on the face of a cat, especially those growing on the upper lip and around the mouth. Precious, of great value, beloved or dear. Fright, a sudden intense feeling of fear or anxiety. Mortifying, causing great embarrassment or shame. Hearty, satisfying and substantial, especially in terms of food. Accustomed, familiar with or used to something. Muslin, a lightweight cotton fabric, 
often used for curtains or clothing. Fry, to cook in hot fat or oil. Woolen, made of wool. Shed, a small, simple structure used for storage or as a workshop. Nest, a structure or place used by animals, such as mice, for shelter or habitation. Caster, a wheel mounted on an upright frame, often used on furniture to allow it to be moved easily. Bruised, injured or damaged by impact, causing discoloration, affliction, a state of pain, distress, or hardship. Plight, a difficult or adverse situation. Bump, a dull thud or impact. Forepaw, the front paw or foot of an animal with paws, such as a cat. Ache, a continuous or prolonged dull pain. Swelling, an abnormal enlargement of a body part, typically as a result of injury or inflammation.